Today we will explore the topic of concrete under fire exposure. It was researched by Aaron Tren, Danny Wu, Muhammad Al Jamal, and Stuart Thornley for the Civil Engineering Materials course project. Concrete is one of the world's most common building materials. It can frequently be seen in the construction of dams, buildings, bridges, and roads, just to name a few examples. Naturally, concrete is very fire resistant, which is ideal in the construction industry. This is a considerable advantage it has over some other materials, like wood. However, concrete structures must still follow the design criteria for fire resistivity. The code from the Canadian Standards Association outlines this in greater detail. In this presentation, we will discuss how the properties of specific materials can influence the fire resistance of concrete. Next, we'll examine how reinforced concrete differs from both normal and high strength concrete by taking a closer look at some of the testing conditions and results. And finally, we'll investigate the relationship between the concrete strength and temperature of fire while also taking into consideration the duration of fire exposure. Silicious aggregates have a more angular shape and carbonate aggregates have a more rounded shape. The picture on the top is of silicious aggregates and the picture on the bottom is of carbonate aggregates. A better bond is created between silicious aggregates and therefore it has a greater initial strength. When exposed to higher temperature fires, carbonate aggregates retain more strength. This is because silicious aggregates are more prone to spalling and carbonate aggregates are more likely to crack on the surface. Lightweight aggregates like pumice and expanded clay have lower conductivity when compared to normal weight aggregates like limestone and granite. This means that normal weight aggregates are more likely to heat up when exposed to a fire. Therefore, lightweight aggregates are the better material when exposed to fire because they can endure fire for longer periods of time. This material is a thermoplastic polymer. The picture in the top right shows an example of the polypropylene fiber and it has similar characteristics to fiberglass. Similar to lightweight aggregates, it also prevents the rapid increase in temperature in the concrete. The graphs in the bottom of the slide demonstrate the effect of polypropylene fiber at different depths of the concrete. The graph on the left shows the temperatures of the concrete without the polypropylene fiber, and the graph on the right shows the reduced temperature within the concrete because of the polypropylene fiber. This reduction in temperature helps prevent explosives falling in the concrete. Fly ash is a similar looking material to cement. It comes from leftover residue of burning coal. Fly ash concrete has a higher residual strength. The graph shown below has different concrete mixes exposed to fire up to 800 degrees Celsius. The two control concrete mixes, CC1 and CC2, both have the lowest compressive strength. All of the remaining mixes on the graph contain fly ash and have higher compressive strength. Blast furnace slag is made from iron ore and limestone are put into a furnace and heated together to chemically combine. Both molten iron and non-metallic blast furnace slag are formed in the process. The slag is cooled and ground into powder for concrete mixing. Blast furnace slag retains compressive strength at elevated temperatures. The graph compares the reduction in compressive strength at temperatures up to 600 degrees Celsius. The blast furnace slag is the LCGG25 plot and the reduction was less than 15%. The normal concrete CC on the graph had an almost 50% reduction in compressive strength. Generally, reinforced concrete performs better under loading in comparison to non-reinforced concrete. The reinforcing steel provides ductility when it yields. When the concrete is exposed to fire, it heats up at a rapid pace. This rapid heating can cause explosive spalling in the outer concrete layer. This will expose the reinforcing steel to the fire. Once the steel is exposed to fire, it will heat very quickly. Extensive damage in the structure can occur, causing total failure or collapse. The picture on the left shows concrete that has spalled, exposing the reinforcement due to a rapid temperature increase, while the picture on the right shows concrete exposed to fire without spalling occurring. For high strength concrete, the compressive strength is 50 megapascal greater. The water simmer ratio is 45% or lower, and we use the water reducing method to do so. The compressive strength of normal strength concrete is lower than 50 MPa. The water simmer ratio is greater than 45%, and there's no water reducing method present. 
Testing condition. The simply supports beam was tested in three types of fire explosion. ASTM E119 with its standard fire explosion, short term and long term severe fire explosion. The applied load is 50 kN. Moisture content is around 74 kg per meter cube. And fire resistance is measured a minute. The high stream can get beam fit at minute 160 under standard fire explosion and at minute 146 under long term severe fire explosion. It survived the short term severe fire. On the other hand, the normal stream concrete beams withstood the fire a little bit longer. Fail at minute 180 under standard fire explosion, same as high stream concrete beam. The normal stream concrete survived short term severe fire. Spotting and cracking effects. Here's a picture of two beam subjects exposing to fire. The one on the top is a high stream concrete beam exposed to long-term severe fire with a severe level spotting, whereas the normal stream concrete beam under short-term severe fire shows some cracks on the bottom but significantly less spotting. In this test, a beam fails when it cannot sustain the prior load. Lower fire resistance indicates faster degradation of strength. When same loads applied, the level of spalling depends on two major factors, fire exposure types and permeability of concrete. Severe so spalling may lead to flexible failure, but quarking enhances permeability and reduces buildup of pore pressure. The low permeability of high stream concrete increases the fire induced spalling, which means high stream concrete is more prone to spalling than normal stream concrete. The effects of temperature of fire exposure on concrete. Fires are classified as either cellulosic, which include timber, fabrics, paper, or hydrocarbon that are chemical or fuel related. As seen on the figure below, hydrocarbons can reach high temperatures at a much quicker rate than cellulosic fires, where a hydrocarbon fire can reach a temperature of 900 degrees Celsius in 8 minutes, whereas a cellulosic fire would take 60 minutes to reach that same level. Concrete undergoes different reactions at different temperatures. From 30 to 300 degrees Celsius, water is lost and the hardened cement paste is dehydrated. From 450 to 550 degrees Celsius, Portlandite or calcium hydroxide is decomposed, therefore increasing porosity, hence decreasing strength and elastic modulus of the weakening hydrates. At 570 degrees Celsius, inversion of quartz takes place as the low temperature alpha phase is converted to a higher temperature beta phase, which increases the volume and hence accelerates the disintegration process of the hydrates. From 600 to 700 degrees Celsius, calcium silicate hydrate phases are decomposed. From 600 to 900 degrees Celsius, Limestone undergoes decarbonation. The figures above plot compressive strength versus temperature of high strength concrete on the left and normal strength concrete on the right. You can tell that during the first 400 to 500 degrees Celsius that compressive strength remains relatively unchanged. This is due to the low thermal conductivity of both concretes which provides proper insulation for the inner core, limiting its strength loss. Long-term versus short-term fire exposure. There was limited research on how fire exposure is affected by time. This might have been due to the large range of variables that could have influenced it. However, we can tell it is highly dependent on the temperature gradient. The graph on the right plots strength versus temperature of a concrete sample that has been heated for 1, 4, and 24 hours. The results are relatively close to one another, suggesting that temperature plays a more significant role than the time period the heat was applied.